I like to think of DevOps engineers as superheroes, but just like a superhero needs their powers, a good DevOps engineer is nothing without their tools. In this video, I'll walk through the five tools every DevOps engineer should know, and also give you the best resources that I found to learn them. Now, first off, a big part of DevOps is managing infrastructure. So as a DevOps engineer, you need to be familiar with an infrastructure as code tool. The most popular one? Terraform. Traditionally, setting up infrastructure was like piecing together a complex puzzle. Things are manual, they're error prone, and they're time consuming. Terraform fixes all of this. Your infrastructure is able to be defined in an easy to understand syntax. Now sure, this is convenient, but it's also really important for promoting a DevOps philosophy around automation and collaboration. So why should a DevOps engineer learn Terraform? What's the career benefit? Companies big and small are moving to the cloud and they need people who can handle that transition smoothly. Think of it this way, you're not just building and fixing things, you're creating entire environments with just a few lines of code. That's efficiency at its best, and employers love efficiency, especially for DevOps roles. Plus, Terraform works with all major cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure. That means you're not just stuck with one vendor. It's a versatile and adaptable skill, which is key in this fast-paced industry. Okay, cool, but how do you actually learn Terraform? I'm a strong believer that the best way to learn any new technology is to get your hands dirty and start building stuff straight away. If you're completely new to Terraform, HashiCorp themselves provide some great introductory labs to get you started. Now, if you want to dive a bit deeper, the Terraform up and running book by Yevgeny Brickman is a must read. What I like the most about this particular book is that it doesn't just teach you the technical stuff. You also learn what the best practices are and how to use Terraform in a company environment. But although Terraform is used to deploy infrastructure, we need a tool that will help us run applications on this infrastructure. This is where Docker comes in. Imagine you just built this app on your computer, but when you try to run it somewhere else, it's like, nope, not gonna work. Frustrating, right? That's where Docker comes to the rescue. It lets you pack your app with everything it needs, like all the code, system tools, libraries, and other dependencies in this package called a container. It's a bit like packing a suitcase with everything you need for a trip and being able to take that suitcase wherever you go. Why does this matter for DevOps engineers? Well, with Docker, they can make sure that their apps work smoothly, no matter where they run, whether that's on different computers, servers, or even in the cloud. This means less time fixing the annoying it works on my computer issue. Plus, it makes sharing and updating apps way easier. Just like Terraform, knowing about containerization and Docker is a very in-demand skill and will be a great boost to your career. This opens you up to a variety of different highly paid jobs and potentially the opportunity to work on cutting edge projects. Now, in terms of resources, I've really enjoyed the Docker Up and Running book by Matthias Karl. There's also a huge amount of great YouTube videos that cater to a variety of different levels. Again, I think the most important thing is to learn a little bit, then go off and try and apply it to a real life project. But there's something else you need to know. Most of these Docker containers actually run on Linux systems. And although it's not strictly a tool, it's still very important in the world of DevOps. Why is Linux important? Well, it's used in many different areas across DevOps, one of which is server management and system administration, since lots of servers run on Linux. But even if you're not directly handling these sysadmin tasks, Linux is still super important in automation. Take my role as an AWS DevOps engineer, for instance. I've had to write bash scripts for automating repetitive tasks and create CI CD pipelines for Linux machines. Does this mean you need to be a Linux super user? No, but you should definitely be familiar with it. I think this Reddit user says it best. Knowing Linux in DevOps is like a chef knowing how to use a knife. I guess you could use all pre-cut ingredients, but it substantially limits your options and makes executing some dishes out of reach. This analogy really hits the nail on the head. Knowing Linux widens the scope of what you can do and the projects you can get involved with. For example, we spoke about Docker earlier. Well, Docker and Linux go hand in hand. Say you need to deploy a new version of your app in a container. You could write a bash script that pulls the latest image, stops the running container, and starts a new one with the updated image, and even has some automated checks. And this is just scratching the surface. You could be managing microservices, automating your environment setup, or even handling complex orchestration tasks. These are the kind of things that make you stand out in DevOps, and employers would tend to agree. From my personal experience, I've seen lots of DevOps job postings list Linux as a good to have skill. Many even set it as a requirement for the job and will test your skills during an interview. Now, this may not come as a surprise, but I think the best way to get comfortable with Linux is to set up your own server. Play around with it. There's a huge amount of free YouTube tutorials on various projects you could try on your own server. This kind of hands-on learning is really the best way to develop your skills. But if you're more into the theory, check out How Linux Works by Brian Ward. It's not a quick read, but it's clear, assumes no prior knowledge, and really digs into the nitty gritty of Linux. However, there's another vital piece missing in a DevOps toolkit, a continuous integration, continuous development, or CI CD tool. Now, the exact tool doesn't really matter. 
You'll most likely have to learn different ones throughout your career anyway. But I would recommend getting really familiar with at least one. In this Reddit survey, GitLab, Jenkins, and GitHub Actions came out as the most widely used among DevOps engineers. If you've never used CI/CD tools before, GitHub Actions is probably the most beginner friendly. So why are these tools important? Imagine that you're building a new app. In the past, you might have to wait until you've put together a large section of the app before showing it to anyone and getting their feedback. But what if the app is full of bugs? Or what if it contains a bunch of features that nobody wants? That's where CI/CD comes in. It provides a means to continuously test your code, catch errors early, and reliably release it. For DevOps engineers, these tools will automate the mundane but crucial part of the job. This frees up engineers' time and allows them to focus on more of the creative and strategic tasks. But it's not just about making the job less stressful. It also ensures a higher quality and more reliable software for users. It's a win-win, really. Happy engineers and happy users. But what about the impact for a DevOps career? The tech landscape is moving towards automation and continuous delivery. So having knowledge of CI/CD tools is a highly sought after skill. A good way to learn about these tools is to take something you've built already and try to integrate a CI/CD pipeline into it. For example, let's say you have a project with code stored in a GitHub repo. A good first step would be to try and add some automated tests to it that runs whenever a new commit is pushed. Then gradually expand on this. The next step could involve automating the deployment process, for example. A side benefit of this approach is that it gives you a great talking point in interviews. Rather than just saying that you know about CI/CD, you can refer to a specific thing that you've set up or automated. Now, within your CI/CD pipeline, you'll probably want to have a step that deploys your code to an environment such as a public cloud provider. Whether it's AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, understanding these platforms is crucial in today's tech landscape. So why should a DevOps engineer bother learning cloud? In the daily life of a DevOps engineer, cloud providers are central to virtually every major task. For example, you could be responsible for ensuring that the software your team develops is operational, scalable, and secure. This is where cloud providers come into play as they offer the infrastructure that supports this. Everything from hosting applications to data storage, network management, and security. Cloud is important. In a 2023 PwC survey, 78% of executives had moved part of their business to the cloud. So the demand for these skills is definitely there. If you decide to pivot away from DevOps in the future, there's also the possibility to specialize as a cloud engineer. Now, although the two roles are quite similar, the actual focus of your day-to-day -day would be a little different. But which cloud provider should you focus on? In a recent Stack Overflow developer survey, unsurprisingly, AWS was the most commonly used cloud provider amongst developers. AWS has been around for a long time and is generally considered the market leader with lots of companies adopting it as their main cloud provider. So as a default, I would suggest learning AWS. And if you're interested, I have outlined my personal step-by-step -step plan of how I learned AWS in this video. However, I don't think it really matters. The skills that you learn from one cloud provider are transferable to another. The important thing is to have a good working knowledge of at least one and have an understanding of the unique services that that cloud provider offers. I think one of the best things about the DevOps industry is that it's more about what you can do rather than your qualifications. A lot of amazing engineers that I work with are self-taught and don't have a computer science degree. A willingness to learn is the most important thing, and I think learning these tools are a great way to show that. But it's not all glitz and glamour. After working in DevOps for a few years now, there is a darker side to the role, which I explain here in this video. 